You've been asking us to use the newest milk paint color, Sweet Pickens Proper. So today we're going to use that on these bar stools. We picked these up at the thrift store last weekend for $8 a piece, and we're also going to be doing some stenciling on them using milk paint. I have to say bar stools and dining chairs are probably some of the grotiest things that we buy because people use them and when they drop them off at the thrift store, they don't bother to clean them before they make it there. I like to use a lint free rag, some warm water and Dawn and the Dawn will cut the grease and sometimes I just kind of get a lot of water on there and let it sit for a second and then I come back and I scrub it off. Are we going to be using extra bond in the milk paint or are we just going straight on for more chippy? So we're going to use a little bit of extra bond just so it doesn't all chip off, especially since these could be kind of greasy even after we clean them. We're using samples of milk paint. One sample should be enough for each bar stool. And I'm just going to measure it out in this cup so I know exactly how much water to put in. So I missed a little bit, but I'm about three and a half scoops of warm water. So I'm just going to take this and do three and a half scoops of warm water and then we'll be ready to mix it with my immersion blender and then add the extra bond. A little pro tip is to add a little less water than the one to one ratio. Then you can check the thickness and always add more if you need to. So if you don't have an immersion blender, a whisk works well. You just want to whisk it until all the chunks are out of it. Or you can use one of those little whisk balls, put the lid on the jar and then shake up your jar. So normally I would do two parts of the mixed milk paint to one part bond for the correct ratio, but I don't want it to be 100% no chippy. So I'm just gonna add a splash. And what I mean is, watch. That's it, it's all the extra bond I'm gonna add. It's not an exact measurement, but it'll keep it from completely chipping off, but hopefully we'll still get a little bit of chip in it. After I add the extra bond, I'm gonna mix it one more time, and then we're gonna let it sit for 15 to 20 minutes to thicken up. All right, so we're gonna be flipping these upside down because we want to paint underneath, because bar stools are a little bit higher. Oh, you got the good one. I would use a French round on these if I had two. I'm using the one and a quarter inch pixie. You wanna paint underneath because you will see them at some point. You wanna paint up underneath so that way it's nice and neat. And it also allows you to paint these rungs and some areas that you might not see if it's upright. Zeb's notorious for getting something all the way done and sealed. <laughs> and then, are you gonna pick a direction? I am. I'm gonna, <laughs> then, go, I'm gonna go the same direction once I get coverage. Oh, okay. And then he will notice that he's missed some spots. One thing to remember- when, everything's so low. I can't just, I can't see it from my vantage point. <laughs> One thing to remember with milk paint is that you only wanna mix up what you're going to use. So keep that in mind. Also, you're only gonna put bond in your first coat, so I probably should have mixed up less. But that's life. That's all right, there's not much in there, so it probably won't gel up on us before we're done painting these. Yeah. The reason why you don't wanna mix up too much is because it, it will not last forever, and if you've added bond, it usually will only last a few hours before it starts to really get thick and jelly. Milk paint is really forgiving. You don't have to be the best painter in the world to get a good look, especially if you want it kind of chippy. It does sometimes drip a little because it's thin, especially if you don't wait like we did. If you don't wait, then it will get kind of runny. But if you wait 15 or 20 minutes like we did to start painting, it really helps the consistency and you're gonna get less drips in your paint job. So let me tell you a story about how I started milk paint. I have known Sasha, the owner of the milk paint company, since before there was even Sweet Pickens milk paint. I actually don't remember how many years ago that was. But I remember loving her work when she started using the milk paint. And the first few times I tried it, she didn't have a, any videos out. So I really had no idea what I was doing. And it was really frustrating because I didn't have the tips and tricks. And I gave up. Then I used it again. Still didn't understand exactly how to do it or anything. And I gave up. Mostly I wasn't waiting for it to thicken. I wasn't mixing it properly. I did, wasn't using extra bond when I needed to, and so I just didn't really know how to use it to the best advantage. Then after about four or five tries, <laughs> I It was only a few pieces of furniture that yeah. we had to completely repaint with a different kind of paint. Then I figured it out and I loved it. And I thought about selling it, but I had a friend that was selling it and she said, well, I'd rather have you, I would rather you not sell it because it would be competition to me. 
Well, I so I took that as, all right, I'm not gonna sell it. So I didn't sell it, and a few years later, I was still loving the milk paint, buying it directly from Sasha. We have some older videos, you'll see that I referred to buying it from her instead of getting it from me. And this particular friend kind of went out of the milk paint world. Like she stopped painting furniture. And so I was like, all right, now's my time. So I got into selling it. There's already another retailer in my town. So I only sell it online or at the Fallbrook location or soon to be Anthem location. But I have loved it. And it's one of those things that it takes a little bit of patience but the more you use it, the more you figure out how it's gonna react. And even now, sometimes I'll be surprised and think something's gonna chip and it won't, or I think something will chip or won't chip and then it'll like completely all chip off. The whole side peels off. You can't be a control freak with milk paint, you just can't. So depending on how these chip is gonna be dependent on what we're gonna seal them with. Because if they're super chippy, I only ever use wax. If they're not super chippy, then sometimes I'll use Sweet Pickens top coat. Because what happens is if they're really, really chippy and you put a liquid top coat, it reactivates the milk paint and it can uncontrollably chip and make you want to poke your eyes out. There's those things I wish I would have known when I first got started. I never want to poke my eyes out. You ever. never want to? I never get that upset that I just want to poke my eyes. Okay, that's a little exaggeration on my part, but you, you get my point. So with milk paint on your first coat, it's gonna be streaky and it's not gonna look great. But your second coat is where you're gonna get that rest of your full coverage. And you shouldn't need a third coat unless you're a perfectionist and you don't want any showing through. Um, we're gonna go chippy, so two coats it is. If you're doing white, pro tip, you're gonna be looking at three to four coats, so be patient. Every other color, I always just do two coats and done. So all natural milk paint crackle, totally random, love it. Zeb's gonna take these outside and hit them with the orbital sander, do a little bit of hand sanding, smooth it out. If you look really close, that milk paint has completely smoothed out. There's no brush strokes, it's not streaky. If you paint it and it gets kind of streaky, chances are you need another coat, but it's nice and smooth even now before we've sanded it. So we've got these taped on here with masking tape. These stencils we're using, we're using number five, and then we're gonna be using number four. You can pick these up at essentialstencil.com. Use code Jamie Ray Vintage to save 10%. We'll drop that link below. We're gonna be stenciling these with zinc milk paint. I mixed up just milk paint with warm water, and I did about one part milk paint to between a half and three quarters water not a whole one-to-one -one ratio because I wanted it to be a little bit thicker for stenciling. I've not done that before, so we'll see how it turns out. And I'm using my Little C wax brush that's also a stencil brush. You can pick up the paint and the stencil brush at jamierayvintage.com. After I dip my brush in the paint, I'm gonna come and offload so it's pretty dry because you almost want to be dry brushing so it doesn't run under your stencil. Now that I'm done, I'm gonna go ahead and take the stencil off. Bam. So here's the thing with milk paint. It could chip just like the milk paint underneath. So keep that in mind when you're using it that it may not be as perfect as you want it to be. Ta-da! After stenciling, we're right over to the sink to wash them off because we do not want the milk paint sticking to the stencils. It is sticky stuff and even though it crackles and chips, where it does stick, it sticks really well. So I'm going to lightly sand over these. There's a little bit of chipping happening and then we'll be ready for our wax. This is just a 220 sanding sponge. So you can see that there is some chipping through the stencil, which I absolutely love, and we're ready for some clear wax. Jamie loves her white wax. I'm just using my 50 cent flat top to come through and white wax the details. So I'm just gonna wipe off this white wax so it just stays down in the details. I'm not waiting because I don't want it to get white everywhere, just down in the cracks. I'll come back with a clear wax and seal it up.
Now that the project is finished, you can probably see why I powered through using milk paint those few times because this crackle chippy look is really hard to achieve with any other paint. Even using a crackle medium, even distressing, the chipping, the random crackle, it just happens with milk paint and it's buttery smooth once you sand it. In December, we talked about doing some fun chippy farmhouse finishes. We're gonna be working on figuring out how to get almost a salvage wood look but out of new wood coming up in the next couple videos here. So stay tuned for that. Comment below if you love chippy paint too and share this with any of your friends that love the chippy farmhouse look. This is our first time stenciling with milk paint. Just mixing the paint up a little thick, it worked great and it went right on. There's no bleed through under the stencil and we even got some fun crackle and chipping in the actual stencil itself. So we'll use these stencils a few more times with some of our Jamie Ray vintage stencils, some more essential stencils, so that way we can show you some different things that happen with stenciling milk paint, and then you guys can try it out on your own. If you wanna achieve a similar look, go to jamierayvintage.com. You can pick up the milk paint. The color is proper. It's the newest milk paint color. The stencil was done with zinc. We used extra bond and paint pixie brushes and wax brushes. If you like this video, be sure to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to Jamie Ray Vintage for more DIY. Yeah.